In my last episode, I detailed how to set up a modem for the first time. Everyone knows you can't have an internet connection without both a modem and a router. So in today's episode from Network From Home, I'm going to be detailing the other half of that equation. The router I'm going to be setting up for you today is a TP-Link AX10 router. I bought this router from my mother-in-law's home network, but I'm going to use it as an example to show you how to set up a router. If you're curious about the process I used for determining why this router was a perfect fit for my mother-in-law's home network, I've previously detailed this in another video that you might wanna check out. Okay, onto the task at hand. Let's crack this baby open. Let's see what's in this box that I received. The first thing we come across are some very handy informational sheets from TP-Link. Let's take a look at what else is in the box here. Here is your router. Here is your AX10 router. Also in the box, there's not too much here. There's an ethernet cable. This is a Cat5e ethernet cable. It's pretty short and it's meant to connect your modem to your router. And then lastly, there's a power adapter. Again, very simply, this is to provide power to your router. At this point, I'll get everything unwrapped here and we can move on to the setup steps. Before we go any further, I should also mention that you'll want your modem on hand. Here is my working modem. You'll want that nearby because the setup steps require that you take some action with your modem as well. Okay, at this point, I've unwrapped and unboxed everything. It's all ready to go. And believe it or not, the first step is to actually power off your modem. My modem is currently powered on. If you have an existing router that you're replacing, make sure you disconnect it from your modem and then make sure your modem is powered off. So let's do that now. The next step here is to connect your modem and your router. Your modem and router need to be connected because your modem is receiving the internet signal from your internet service provider and your router needs to broadcast that signal to your home and all the devices in it. So let's get these connected. The first thing we have to do, we wanna take one end of the ethernet cable we wanna connect it to the only ethernet port on the back of the modem here. There's nowhere else to plug it in, so it's pretty straightforward here. And the other end of the ethernet cable, that goes into the back of your router. As you can see here, there are actually five ethernet ports. The one you wanna connect the ethernet cable to is this blue one here. This is your WAN port, or it's your wide area network port. This is an ethernet port that's designated to connect your router and modem together. Next, we wanna power the modem back on and allow it to reboot, so we'll plug it back in. Your modem will go through the boot up process here. You can see it's just starting with that first light. Other lights will cycle on and off as it reboots, but once it comes to a steady state, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, after a few minutes, your modem will be all powered up. As you can see, these lights are all green and steady state here. At this time, we wanna provide power to your router. So we're going to take this power adapter. We're going to connect this end to the back of your router. There's a little connecting port here. It's the only place that it will fit. So we plug that in, and then we plug the other end into a nearby outlet. Once the router is connected to power, we want to power it on. There's a little button in the back here. You just click it in. After you connect it, you'll see the lights on the front. All are starting to light up and it's starting to cycle. Very similar to the modem, the lights will go through a cycle. When they reach a steady state, we'll go to the next step. All right, after a few more minutes here, our router has four lights. They're all green, steady state. So now our connection is complete. Our modem is connected to our router. Our modem has a good internet connection. And now we need to actually set up the network for this router. We'll be doing this through my laptop, but one thing to keep in mind here before we start, on the bottom of the router itself, it will give you the default names of the Wi-Fi networks you can connect to. So here they are, they're right here on the bottom of the device. I'll flash them up on the screen just as a reference so you can see what they look like. And what I'm going to do is I'll be connecting to these Wi-Fi networks, and this will allow me to make changes to the router settings. Okay, here we are on my laptop. We're gonna go down here in the corner. 
We're gonna to go to wireless networks here. And then here we are, TP-Link D26C underscore 5G. I recognize that as one of the default networks, so let's connect to it. And on the bottom of the router on this sticker, not only does it detail the default wireless networks, but it also details the default password for both of these networks. So we're just going to enter that now. Okay, it's verifying and connecting. It might take a moment here because it's the first time you're connecting to the router. All right, I'm now connected to this default wireless network. The next thing we need to do is we need to access the settings for this router. What we need to do is go to the default location. This is also on the bottom of your router on the sticker as well. It will give you the location where you can access the settings for your router. So let's go and put that in now. All right, we have an internet browser window open and we just need to put in HTTP TP link, oops, TP link wifi.net. Continue to the site. And here, because you're signing in for the first time, you need to select a password for the administrative settings of your router. This is something you wanna make sure you remember and it's not easy for other people to guess. So let's go ahead and put that in now. Once you put in a password, go to let's get started. Now you just log into your router settings with the same password you just set. And now you'll see the Wi-Fi icon here in the bottom. We previously, it said secured connection, but no internet. Now that you've set up a connection to your router settings, you have accessed your router. It has recognized that you have a Wi-Fi connection. Now we just walk through these setup steps here. These connection types here, I usually just select the default, dynamic IP, default MAC address for the router MAC. Here's where you can set up a unique Wi-Fi network name and password. If you don't like these defaults, you can change this to something that's more familiar for you. You can pick something clever. And obviously you wanna pick a password that's unique that isn't on the bottom of your router. You want something a little bit more secure than that. A feature of this router that I've talked about in the past is Wi-Fi Smart Connect. I usually disable this because I like to control what Wi-Fi network my devices connect to. And in doing so, that will give you a separate 2G and 5G Wi-Fi network to connect to. Here you can pick unique names and passwords for each, or you can use the same password for each of the networks. But you will want to identify these networks individually, so you may want to add some unique identifier, whether it's 2G or 5G, at the end of the Wi-Fi network names. And in order to do that, you want to go to set each band separately, that way you have a different name and you can either set the same password or a different password for each. Select next. And here you're testing the internet connection just to make sure everything is okay. After a few minutes, it says the connection is good to go. It gives you a summary of your settings choices. And here we click next again. You can set up a TP-Link cloud service if you want. We're gonna skip that for now. And here you go. Here is your basic homepage for your router settings. Now you can go ahead, you can make changes to your Wi-Fi networks and passwords if you'd like to make more configuration changes. In addition, you can also change the security settings. Or if you'd like, you can set up a guest network which makes your Wi-Fi networks more secure. Your guests access only your guest Wi-Fi network and they're not able to perform the same things that you're able to do on your home network Wi-Fi networks. If you run into any problems or have any issues setting up your router for the first time, please leave a comment below. If this procedure was helpful for you, please give the video a like. That way it will get shared with other people and they'll have visibility into this process so they can get their router up and running quickly. Lastly, if you like the things I talk about on this channel, I invite you to subscribe. I'll continue to put out more videos similar to this moving forward, and they'll be able to give you a boost when it comes to your home network. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.